。澳门统计暨普查局数据显示，二至四月份，本地居民失业率为百分之四点五，本地居民就业不足率为百分之三点七，而青年失业问题则愈趋严重。失业人士中，高等教育学历的比例最高，达五千一百人，占总失业人数百分之三十八点三五。在复杂的就业形势之下，澳门高校如何在教学方式上与时俱进，迎接经济结构转型所带来的新机遇？为此，南方财经全媒体记者蔡依莹邀请到了澳门圣若瑟大学校长麦世文，一起来听听他的观点。Nice to meet you, <laughs> Shelley. Okay, so first question is about the main characteristic of USJ. Sure, USJ is a strange creature, and so if you like, we have a Macau parent and a Portuguese parent, and that means that we're very conscious of being a place in which we have both Chinese DNA in the way we go about being a university and European DNA. We have very mixed group of people working in the university. About one third of our students are international students. About a quarter of our staff are from overseas. We have, I think, students from 47 or 48 different countries. We have over 50 first languages in the university. Macau has been a place in which the West has encountered China, and China has encountered the West. And so, in that sense, we consider ourselves to be simply part of what Macau is. Almost 500 years history of being involved in, in in education here in Macau. And so, there is a different, there's a different, distinct feel. We're very much part of Macau, but we come with international and specifically European, and even more specifically Portuguese perspectives on what it is to be a university. You mentioned about the European DNA. Yes. So can you just、uh, give us some more details about European DNA? What it means? One of the things that characterises those European universities is、uh, an approach to creative thinking and critical thinking, not in the sense of negative, but in the sense of analytical thinking. That is, in part, I think, derived from the, the structure and the characteristic of European languages. They have quite complex grammar, for example. And can you just explain more about now the new generation? We will change、uh, our teaching style. Yeah. Well, it's a really good question. I think one of the, the real challenges with students nowadays is the both the positive and the negative effects of technology. I think almost everybody who studied this says that the effect of particularly video technology. And social media has been to shorten attention spans. That is, students often want different、uh, approaches quite quickly, one after the other. I'm not that old, but when I was a student, I expected to go to the library and spend all day reading and taking notes. I don't think our students operate like that. One or two do, but they want different approaches all the time. They want perhaps a short video here. Perhaps a podcast there. Maybe、uh, they will do some reading, but they might want to read on their tablet or on their phone rather than reading from a book. Yes, they might need a professor to come back to and say, "I've been looking at this, and I think it needs that." And the professor to say, "Maybe not quite." Yeah, it needs that, but it doesn't need the professor constantly being the expert student. In some ways, you want the student to acquire. An intellectual capacity to become the experts themselves.、Mm, as you say, there are many kinds of studying、uh, ways.、Mm. Uh, for example, listen, read, or just practice. Yes. Sometimes practice can make people more understand what、yes. <laughs> happens. Yes. Yes. So,、uh, do you think that practice is better than just reading? I think reading is, is itself, or can become very. Very passive. One of the things that I have always said to students that I've taught is that if you want to know whether you understand something, try and teach me what you've learnt. So if I say to you, "Go and read that book," come and tell me what the argument is. Well, you actually have to think about that, don't you? You have to practice the thinking. I think that would be an example of that. Actually, one of the benefits of having, for many of our students, having 
been brought up learning to speak and to write Chinese is that part of their learning involves that very laborious process of learning to write your characters. Besides studying, maybe some people need to go to internship or just yep. find some work opportunities. Yep. Uh, what do you think about this situation? Is that almost all our undergraduate programs have internships and not just simply two week earned internships, very substantial internships. Now, one of the benefits of that is that they've already got a relationship with employers, and if they're any good when they graduate, they don't have to ask for jobs, the jobs are offered to them. Um, so yeah, I think internships are very, very important, as are big capstone projects. So for our design students, for example, making something. For my students, writing a proper thesis with a proper argument. These are really, really important ways of developing skills that they will use in the workplace. Well, now, Macau government is trying to promote uh, diversification mm. on the transition of industries and yes. economic. So what do you think we can do? Macau is only 36 square kilometers. It is very, very small. Expanding into Hangzhou gives Macau the one thing that it really lacks, which is space. Now, when it comes to the diversification of Macau, I think one of Macau's huge potentials is precisely to be a place for cultural and intellectual engagement and exchange between China and the rest of the world in a way that doesn't exist anywhere else. I think Hangzhou could form a part of that um, because it can give space for the development of universities there are some interesting things coming out of that collaboration that might need to be industrialized or commercialized. So Hangcheng offers a huge opportunity for us where that's concerned, I think. Yeah, I would like to ask you about the main source of USJ. As we know, um, there are European, mm -hmm. um, many China, yep. or some other uh, yep. countries. Uh, we've always had a significant number of Portuguese students. But we also have students coming from other parts of the Portuguese-speaking world. We have students from Southeast Asia, from, uh, from Myanmar, from Vietnam, from East Timor. We also have students from other parts of Europe, including a couple of doctoral students who are from Ireland. And for a lot of our, uh, a lot of our students, and for a lot of students in the other universities here, who've come from the mainland, then there's a, there's a feel that they're getting something that they don't have to go to Australia or to Europe to experience. Okay, mention about mainland China students. Yep, yep. What do you think, what's the main factors motivate them go to Macau and choose USJ or other Macau higher education institutions? I think it is curiosity. I, there are, there's always a proportion of people who want to experience learning in a different environment. And China's a very, very big country something like a fifth of the world's population and therefore a fifth of the world's young people. And so you're going to have a large number of people who, even if there are only a small proportion of Chinese students, who will want to experience that. And as I said, Macau is safe. Macau is a place in which you can be comfortable as a Chinese. And what can we do to contribute to cultivate some talents for Macau's different kinds of uh, directions? I think we are now almost halfway through the 50-year period after the handover with Macau as part of one country, two systems. And inevitably, the next 20 or so years, Macau is going to have to become more and more integrated into the mainland. Now, the Greater Bay Area is one of the great engines of the world economy. It's a hugely dynamic place. It has a very large population. It's a population that's grown very quickly. When I first came to this part of the world in 1984, Shenzhen was a city, was a, a village really, the population of about 20,000 people. Now it's an enormous mega city. This is what's happened in what we now call the Greater Bay Area. So I think Macau has to understand itself as being part of that community. And as a university, we have to understand ourselves as being part of that community, which means that we have to understand the needs of that community. We need to build up strong links with, we need to build up strong links both with universities and with commercial uh, businesses in the Greater Bay Area. Because 
if a university is not listening to its society, it produces students who are not fit for that society, are not ready for that society. I think one of the things that strikes me, what's really important, is how many people are economically secure, how many people have enough money, have enough food, have enough security to plan for their future. And so one of the things that we reflect upon in our business courses, for example, I, all I can say is that as a university, we're committed to listening before acting. We hear what the community around us wants. For example, we're working very hard at the moment in association with the government on how to use modern technology to produce really high quality social care for the elderly. China's population is aging very fast, that is people are living longer and that's a great blessing but it's only a great blessing if people are able to be dignity. And we hear when we talk to universities, to businesses and to municipalities in the Greater Bay Area that this is something that they're really interested in.